Hi, I'm Robert. I come to you as an automobile enthusiast that has maintained, serviced, and repaired my own vehicles in excess of 30 years. I currently drive a car with over 230,000 miles on it, and I once had a car that had over 400,000 miles on it and ran very well. While you're watching the video, please watch a step or two ahead. Sometime the current step is better explained in the next step or two. Also, like, share, subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you benefit from the information. Okay, I wanted to talk to you a minute about what happens if you overheat the car and the car fails to start after it was overheated. What usually happens when a car is overheated is it'll blow a hose or two and then uh, the temperature will continue to rise. The needle inside the car will probably go into the red before you know it and the car will start running rough. When the car starts running rough, uh, that's when you normally look down and see that the temperature gauge is rising, and by that time, it's probably already in the red, and since the car is running rough, it's already too late. The final thing that I'm gonna explain right here is kinda of what happens to the motor. Once the motor overheats, uh, the block is normally steel, which doesn't deform as quick as the aluminum head. This is a head cover, and there's a line that goes along there. Some people call it the valve cover. It's the cover for the cams. Same difference. Under that, you have the head. So the head starts about at this line here, and it goes down the motor till it meets with the block. That may be 6 inches deep, that may be uh, 12 inches deep. However long that is, that's where it mounts to the block. Now once this car overheats, this aluminum will deform when it heats up and cools down. And there's a seal in between this head and the motor block. When that head deforms, it'll cause some warping action in it, which causes the head gasket to allow combustion air, oil, and or coolant to transfer into their different chambers that they don't belong in. For example, I pulled this spark plug out right here on the number three cylinder. When I pulled that spark plug out, the only thing that's supposed to be in there is combustion air. The explosion from the spark plugs when they meet fuel. Well, when I pulled that spark plug out, it had coolant on it. The spark plug was wet with coolant. That let me know that coolant had filled that chamber, and now compression cannot happen in that chamber. So, whenever a car runs, it needs four things. Air fuel, proper timing, and compression. Well, once that head gasket blows, you no longer have compression and the motor won't run anymore. So you could crank and crank and crank, this car won't start because it has no compression. And I did do a compression test and the compression test shows that there's not enough compression in the cylinders. The compression should be probably somewhere around 175, 185. The compression here was 60, 30, 0, and 70. So none of these cylinders have enough compression for the car to fire and run. So this car has a blown motor, and it's a result of coolant roulette. So let's not play Russian roulette with your motor with coolant leaks. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.